Hi, it's Dr. Matthew at Ferndog Kennels. So today I'd like to talk to you about some of the rules and regulations of bringing pets from overseas into Hong Kong, where our offices are. So, we in Hong Kong, or the Hong Kong government, they, they divide uh, different countries into different groups. So category one, category two, and category three. Um, category one tends to be um, uh, islands like the, the UK, like, like Taiwan, like um, Japan, like Australia. So, so places where the, the, there's a landmass which is co uh, completely surrounded by sea. And so then the, the rabies control and the, the biosecurity of that island is, is very easy for the local for that government to, to regulate whether or not there's any rabies cases coming in and out of their territory. Um, category two are, are places where the, the governments are, are doing a fantastic job in, in, in eliminating and, and, and dealing with rabies. However, where, uh, where there are perhaps uh, multiple borders or, or large areas of landmass where it's a little bit difficult to be certain. So most of the EU, um, uh, America, Canada, uh, countries like this are, are category two. Um, and category three is places where they know this, essentially they know that there is rabies. So this could be India, this could be Africa, um, Thailand, Indonesia, uh, countries where there is unfortunately some rabies. Now, um, you know, why does this matter? Uh, what, what, what's important? Okay, the reason why this matters is, is actually a rabies is a zoonosis. This is a disease which can tr uh, transmit from people to pets or, you know, from, from animals to, to, to humans and, and back. So, so there's, a, there's a human health risk as well as the animal health risk. So uh, actually it has been shown that um, um, you know, thousands of, of, of people die every year of rabies. Um, it, it, causes, um, it causes death by, it's, it's a virus and it can go to the, to the nervous system and the brain. It's, um, it's quite unpleasant and, and it normally tends to be um, children who have been bitten by dogs in, uh, like by, by wild animals, like uh, principally, principally dogs. In, in, in rural communities in, in, in Africa or India, places like this. So uh, 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 Hong Kong, like every country in the world, is, is doing its best to try to stamp out these diseases. So, so locally in Hong Kong, um, all the dogs have a uh, AV, AVID nine-digit microchip. Uh, all of the dogs have to be rabies vaccinated and all of the dogs have to have a, a license um, showing this process has been done and that license needs to be updated every three years when a new rabies vaccination is done. Um, cats don't have to have this because cats don't 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 uh, you know don't 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 uh, don't really go outside in Hong Kong. Um, so um, there are different rules and regulations from 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 where you're coming from as to you know the biosecurity risks so the risk of of diseases being brought into Hong Kong. So for for category one, for example, um, um, say England or Scotland. Um, bringing, a, bringing a dog or cat to Hong Kong. Um, the pets can come here when they're quite young, uh, over, over uh, 60, days, 60 days, like two months old, and they don't even need to have any rabies vaccines at all because it's, 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 it's a given that they're coming from a country where there is no rabies there, so they can't be introducing it to Hong Kong. Um, they, they still do need to have the... If they're a cat, they need to have a, 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 a kind of a, a vaccine for... for uh, feline enteritis, feline infectious enteritis, and for uh, Kalichiva virus and herpes virus, so kind of cat flu. Um, if they're a dog, they need to have a vaccination for the, for the regular stuff which dogs are vaccinated against. Distemper, hepatitis, parvo, these type of diseases. So um, it's still recommended to have vaccinations to come into Hong Kong, but, but it's not necessary to have a rabies vaccination. It's also is recommended, it, also, it is also necessary to have a microchip, so then that individual pet is, you know, there's, there's a link between the pet and the documentation. That's, that's, that's how it's possible to identify that it's that pet that's had the, the vaccines. Okay, moving on to, to category two. So, for example, a, a, a dog or cat coming from France now, or, or, from, or from the States. Okay, they have to be over five months of age. So a, a little bit longer to, to, in, to ensure that, that if, if the pet was exposed to rabies, that uh, it's had a chance for the symptoms to, to come out and show. Um, also, they do need to have a rabies, had a rabies vaccine. 
they need to have had a rabies vaccine um, at least 30 days before they've travelled to Hong Kong and they need to have had the rabies vaccine within the last year. Um, they also still need to have the, the vaccines for like DHP, distemper hepatitis parvo, if they're a dog, and the, the uh, cat flu vaccines if they're, if they're a cat. And they do need to have a microchip. Um, the, the way it is in Hong Kong is, is if, your pet has, if your dog has come in and has had a, an, an ISO chip, the 15 digit international chip, in the country where you're bringing the pet from to Hong Kong, Unfortunately, the Hong Kong government, for its rabies regulations and the, and the dog licenses, the Hong Kong government uses AVID chips, these nine-digit microchips numbers. So, so the, the pets, the dogs, not the cats, but the dogs coming into Hong Kong will get another vaccine at the airport for rabies and they will get given an AVID chip. And so, um, unfortunately, it's very difficult to, to, to stop the dogs having the rabies vaccine, but if you're not keen on them having an AVID chip, then you can ask your veterinarian to implant the avid chip, you know, in the overseas country before it comes to Hong Kong, and then it doesn't need to have two chips. Okay, the, the third category is category three. This is, for example, India. Now, these pets have to go into quarantine in Hong Kong on arrival, and they need to have four months of quarantine in Hong Kong when they get here. A, a, um, an additional problem is, is our facilities in Hong Kong to handle pet quarantine is very limited. There's hardly any space at all. And so we, we do have two quarantine centres, one's in Hong Kong Island and one's in Kowloon, but they're both very small. They don't have a lot of space for, for animals. And so actually at the moment, there's approximately a waiting list of, of a year to a year and a half for pets to come to Hong Kong. So, so we're, in a, we're in a sorry situation at the moment of, of, of having to tell many people who may be even just travelling from Shanghai to, to Hong Kong, because Shanghai and, and, and that, that part of China is, is counted as Category 3, we're in a sorry situation of actually have, uh, telling often to, to people, please move your dogs to, for example, to, to America or to, or to Europe or to UK or somewhere else first, uh, stay there for 180 days before coming into Hong Kong. And this way, the, the Hong Kong quarantine process you know, the four months in quarantine can be avoided and also the year plus in, in waiting list can be avoided. So, so, so what I'd like you to do is, is, is please talk to us about your individual pets requirements and, and what your requirements are, like wh when you're moving, um, and then we can help you to give you individual guidance on, on, on what's best for your individual pets' health and welfare and, and safety and as to what's best for, for your personal individual circumstances and and uh, and your relocation or, or your travel. Okay, thanks so much for your for your time. I hope that was helpful. Thanks then. Bye bye.